In for repair today, we have our GT Grimmy 170 harvester. We also have not one, but six John Deere's in. Um, yeah, and we also took a trip down to IFM, which is industrial farm machinery down outside Dunlea. And uh, there is a bit of a giveaway in this video, so stay tuned to that one. But first of all, we're going to head over to IFM. So today we've taken a little trip down to the County Lowry. Yeah, we're down here with Joe Riley, proprietor here of IFM, Industrial Farm Machinery. You have to say, Joe, uh, number one, congratulations, a huge milestone. Thank you very much. Yeah, 56 years mm -hmm. I heard in business, probably started way back in the late 60s. And, yeah, 68. And look at today has been just as a kind of a celebration to all the different, um, we we'll say you do a huge range of products here. Yeah, look at what it is today is about, we've never officially opened the shop uh, because of COVID one thing or another. And uh, Desi is actually here 35 years this year. So we said, look, we'll combine couple of number of different things and it's like a customer appreciation day where look people can come and um, we can have a bit of a celebration a bit of an atter and you know that we serve a bit of food and all and it's just a thank you and just recognition of the length of time that we've been here yeah no i have to say now it's a it's a credit to you as all now we've been around the back there on the stores there with all the different um paddle racking and all that and that's an incredible uh <laughs> thing to watch it's it's uh we might we'll show a little clip of a hand just to explain a little bit more but mainly your business you're concentrating here is the retail shop selling to the the general public anything from ag to construction any parts that they may need yeah, like what, what we want to do is, is we're not necessarily a one-stop shop, but as I said on LMFM, we have 21,000 different parts here in stock. And what we want is we're not really on the hard sell, but just in terms of if you break down and you need to get going, there's a fair chance we'll be able to help you. Yeah, we look at you in a very, very busy area here between tillage men and pedeja men and construction uh, crews and that. And I have to say, coming in here, as you say, it's a one-stop shop, guys. You just come in here. They have everything, all the different ranges here. You'll see them there as, as, uh, as you go around the shop. We also have a few balloons here. This is for Desi in the stores. He's here over 35 years, so well done, Desi, there. Joe, a um, little bit of a giveaway. Yep. So uh, you're going to ask the question. So look, the, the question for the giveaway this week is how many hoses a week do we make? Right, and this is the prize. We have a set of work boots there. So whoever's closest to that one, put it in on the comments below and we get these pair of work boots out to you. So it's quite high. So yeah, keep guessing on that one. Thanks, Joe. Thank you. <laughs> if anyone wants anything, go down to Mullins Cross, just outside of Dunlea, uh, IFM. They have everything in stock. Um, have to say, a fantastic, fantastic shop and fair play to the boys here. Okay, thank you. Thank Thanks you. for coming down. Just walking here on a John Deere 3050. Again, this is one we would have brought in. Um, I bought it down in Wexford. I can't think of the chap's name, but he's probably, probably watching the channel anyway. So. Yeah, we start on your old tractor again. This one actually has an 88. It's an MH Reg tractor. So that's probably what drew me to it. Now, running very sweet, I have to say. Lovely engine. It. The problem is here, the cab. Yeah, it's probably one of the worst cabs I think I've ever come across in the John Deere. Completely rotten here in at the back. And the floor in, inside in the cab too is really, really poor on it. So I've just never, ever seen one, one as rusty as this. Cab has gone in there. It's like something was down in the sea, I don't know. But maybe when it's all cleaned out there, we, we will bring it in to Mark with then he might do a job on it. Again, all the glass is in it. Lovely, the dash is good on it, which is unusual for these. Dash is good, and yeah, that's really it. We are just going to do a few small bits on it, not going to go mad on it. Bonnet, where we'll respray the bonnet, we'll do um, front weights, do anything that's, that's accessible on it. And then Connor, you'll probably get fed up with it then, won't you? Because oh. you'd be sick looking at all these yolks, wouldn't you? Yeah, yeah. So we just said we do this, going to give it a wet week, and yeah. yeah, be no work done on the land. So we're in here. So the plan is, Connor, what is the plan? Uh, he does, it up, Connor really. doesn't know, because I well. have the plan, it's not it. <laughs> and I have told him already. But anyway, Connor, we're going to take the arms off it, yeah. anything that's external that we can spray up and get ready. Yeah. Again, as you can see, the rust is here and every pin you touch um, seized. is seized. Yeah. So maybe put a bit of heat on that then and we can maybe put a, uh, get that pin out. But that has rusted away. We bring it around the side of it here. That's one out, one to go. I right, can't even cut that one because
could use the, we have the big set of gas bottles, but just sometimes handy to use this. Might dig a whole lot to, to take it out. Look in there. Say it'll go. Huh? Say it'll go. We might just get it off here. Put that back out of my way. And that's it. Just pin loose. So that's the two arms off. That can get you going, then get them cleaned up. Yeah. We can get them sprayed up. We're looking like we're probably going to have to take the cab off, to be honest. Um, getting cab off in these probably, when you're not really used to them, it's probably under an hour just to take them off. But uh, we have some issues there with, I think the throttle is seizing it. Yeah. And, uh, the jewel of the season as well, so we have to investigate that. But we're going to take the cab off. Cab mountains are, are completely um, gone on it there as well, so there wouldn't be a lot of suspension on it, I'd say, at the minute. But apart from that, now engine wise, I have to say, lovely, lovely running tractor. Uh, we would have sent the wheels away to get re sprayed because um, we, we had a few of them come in and we just sent them all away, got the rims done on them there. Again, possibly you could do it with a set of tyres on it, but there is new tyres on the front of it. 2850 is coming along, just doing, uh, we've sprayed the front, grilling it here. Bonnet has to be sprayed on it as well. These lower brackets. The question is, do we leave them on or take them off? If we take them off, that's it. Probably never will go back on it. Connor, what do you reckon? You going to spray them up? Probably could spray them up. Leave we them probably on. could spray them up and leave them, and then at some stage maybe we might take them off. We just want to see if the tractor um, mechanically sound. We have been driving around the yard, and it, it just it looks it, it feels good and it drives well and all that. But uh, yeah, so look, it's just very hard to look at there when you see the the bracket that the, the lower brackets on it. These um, lights are for here, and I think they were originally black. Yeah. Say that. Oh, yeah. So we'll take the covers off that, <coughs> spread them up black, and that'll stay in each side of it as well. But when it gets those few bits tidied up on it, again, all the welding is done inside on her, and we just need a complete uh, pattern set for it. And that's really some of it anyway. We have a few jobs done on the back of it, have you? I'm going to do the arms, uh, drop links on it, pick up hitch, um, give it a, a clean up as well. We've just tidied up here at the back and we just need to tidy up there as well. And hopefully that will just kind of get, just get back on the road to see. Again, if you're doing a full restoration, that it will possibly be cab off, uh, nothing board job, but an awful lot of work involved in something like that. So we just want to get this one physically, just get it back up and running and uh, just to see, just to see what it's about. But it, yeah, it looks good apart from that. Now mechanically it's, 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 it's sound, I think anyway, so. We'll, uh, we'll let you work away on that one. Come on. So, Katie, yeah. you are uh, on college from Ballyhays, but you're not from Ballyhays, no. obviously. <laughs> you're from down the, the wee county, aren't you? Yeah, I am, Dunlear. Yeah. D Dunlear, good stuff. Yeah. Well, Katie Ward has come up and she's on a placement here for a week stint yeah. from Ballyhays. And as you can see, she's hard at it here. So, you're on your placement for many weeks? Yeah. Eight weeks. Good stuff. Yeah. And uh, this is your first week. Yep. Yeah. And I see you're stuck here at the 2850. What's going on? Oh sure, just taking things apart so Connor can get going here. Get yeah, so spine. so Katie's job is to take the arms off the 2850 and yeah. they're probably seized, are they? Oh, yeah. Mostly, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, well, um, you're enjoying it anyway? Yeah, I am, yeah. It's lovely. Yeah, no, good Something to get out. to do, yeah. Well, I noticed there Connor is in the background there and he's done very little since Katie came in here. <laughs> he's more time talking around, I think, than, than actually walking, but... Oh, no. Uh -huh. We get things done. But I think Katie will be the boss shortly and she'll be telling Connor what to do, so hopefully oh, that's the way it'll that. be. <laughs> yeah. Well, look, the best of luck, anyway. We'll keep uh, annoying you. you there as you go through the, the your couple of weeks and uh, have a bit of crack on yeah, this, not exactly. it? That's what it's all about. <laughs> Just Connor here is on the bonnet now. Connor is no expert spray painter, but uh, he's willing to give it a go, aren't you? Oh, give it a go. Really. Give it a go. <laughs> now I see here, especially along with the sticker, was 
with, I don't know whether it's the adhesive, is it? It's kind of I was feeling very yeah. rough. I was so, a bit of a moss or adhesive or something. Like that. Yeah, so we sanded it down as best we could and we just put a primer on it. And uh, he's watching all them YouTube videos now and he's going to master classes by the time he's finished, he reckons, mm. anyway. So <laughs> we have two bonnets here. We've one after, I think that's the 2050. And, and that's 50. one after 2850. Yeah. And uh, he's going to crack on with them now. So I said, here, on you go. You can walk away there, sure. See what happens. See what happens in that head. Yeah. Um, again, look, it's not an easy thing just to get a finish on it. And there's a series of different between primers and so, um, yeah. we'll say two pack paint and lacquers you can use in this. It's it's a whole different my, um, ball game altogether. Yeah. And there's a lot to be learned on it. But there's only one way he's going to learn, and that's trial and error anyway. So yeah. we'll, we'll help him as much as we go along. But for the minute there, he is the two bonnets off. and. Hopefully they'll be green there again, the evening's out. Right, so That's the plan. Yeah. We have all our linkages there, drop links, After arms all lined up. Yeah. Um, and again, in the yeah. tunnel here, it's very warm. It's his today for a while anyway, it hasn't been raining. It dries so it dries out fairly quick. And you can go to, you know, you can go to extremes on these if you want to by sand, by, uh, sand blasting them and that. But we're not really going to do that. We just want to get the tractors kind of more functional up and running and uh, just see that they're mechanically sound, isn't that it? Yeah. Go on, so let you walk away there. We're 6175 in, a little pool of oil under it there yesterday. Rang the boys below the Mead Farm and Barry Lee has come up there this morning just to have a quick look at it. Again, it can be anything when it's underneath the tractor, especially nowadays with the amount of crap and that that they kind of yeah. gather and the muck and clay. We didn't know where it was coming from, but you have got underneath it and you poked a, a good bit of old clay out underneath it and probably found the problem. Have you, you have it there on your phone, haven't you? Pictures here, yeah. Yeah, so the idea of the phone is a great job, especially a little bit of a video or a picture underneath. Two, two, uh, two eye leaks, one, one fixable. Well, both fixable and one fixable. Both fixed, but one four-wheel drive shaft seal. Yeah. And the other one is... Is that suction pipe, isn't it? Large suction pipe underneath the back right-hand side. Yeah, yeah. So, so he has tightened the clamp on it, a couple of torns, and that's, six that torns seems to have solved that. Seems to have cured that, so. Right, so that's really it. The four-wheel drive then, what's, what's involved in doing the seal like that, uh, is it? Take the cover off, pull the front cover off, new yeah. seal, new flange, a bit of flange sealant. That's um, it. And do you have drain oil over that you do? Drain the back end oil over, yeah. Right, so okay. That's all right. We're looking, we're going to get, we'll have yeah, that done. And uh, with another problem there, we're going to tip over there to our 6930, which fairly regular problem, especially on the 6930s, yeah. uh, front PTO, and we're going to we'll talk about that. 6930, uh, front PTO, well, front PTO not working. Generally, it can be, more than likely, it's a switch, isn't it? Switch, solenoid, um, the, ob the first obvious one is to go switch for your switch. In the cab, yeah. Yeah, well, the problem we had this last year, it would work, it'd work for a while, and then mm. all of a sudden you had mm. no front PTO. I, it probably still looking towards a solenoid, I think, but. Possibly um, a solenoid, yeah. We've tried to switch, and As every it gets time. Hot, it, yeah, it, yeah, it probably only gets warm. Now, we have another little issue here with this as well is that. No, just track the head front PTO, but as you can see, it's a sm small bit narrower here. The is this one of his? This switch is kind of fouling in it, isn't it? Now look, unless there's a different switch available, but as yeah. you can see here, rear PTO. I'd say that was a spool valve at one occasion. Yeah, so it's not really far, the front PTO. Yeah. But there still might be a switch available. It, possibly, yeah. If not, we can, as you said, you can pull a little bit off in there or pull a bit off the switch more than likely. Yeah, we could we could give Mick there just yeah. to maybe to shave it off a little bit off and, and probably would sit in there, but just probably not going to, you don't want to put too much pressure on that switch because no. then, then definitely won't work. <gasps> now, front front uh, solenoid, how do you test that or can you test it? You off? can test the resistance across the coil, but it'll be more than likely when it gets hot. Yeah. It has to, when it's working, when it's cold, it'll be probably fine, but when you test it, do you know what I mean? You'd have to get it hot and see could be just the coil, the resistance breaking down the side. Yeah, yeah, and then once that happens, once then, hot, that's yeah, it. Yeah. So it's just be a matter of putting a new coil into it then. New solenoid in it, yeah. Right, okay, yeah. Right, look, we'll, we'll, we'll see how we go. Don't know how much we have a front PTO top run here, ready to go dig today, but just might, that might just happen today. So, <laughs> no, no. so it might be high before we'll actually get to test it. But Possibly tomorrow or night. Yeah, yeah, so we, we have it on and we keep an eye on it. We're going to, we, we first, we, we try the switch, we have a solenoid and we probably hold it in the storage yeah. there. And if the yeah. case may be, we can swap it out then and, yeah. and uh, see how it goes. It's not hard to swap it out anyway. That's it, Barry, that's All a few right. bits wrapped up anyway. Yeah. So just that front PTO or that. Um, the front, fo the forehead drive, drive, drive uh, drop box, drop seal. box, the seal has yeah. gone on that, yeah. and that has everything up to date. Yeah. Yeah. Look, well, you, we'll see, you can see as you we'll go along. With that big pipe on the side, look, 
it was weeping, you know what I mean? So yeah, yeah. It took a good pull on, so look, see what happens, you know. Right, that's all right. Well, look, you're going to have these few bits of problems to go along. That's what, that's what the boys are here for. Yeah, that's yeah. the service they give us, so uh, just like thank Barry there for coming up. No problem. Thank you. Last week's video there, we were talking about the 6910 and the headliner um, kit that's in it on the in here on the cab. Now, we had got um, these little screws that we we're going to throw in, but we had the wrong colour uh, cushions. Now, this has come with the correct colour. It's probably fairly, maybe a little bit light, if anything, but probably as close as it's going to be. So we popped them up here. Look at it. They're not. These are not perfect. There's no question about it. But. Uh, they're not a lot better than what they were, and if you just want to get something out, get, get uh, out of out of trouble there in in a hurry, maybe it's you yeah, possibly could use them if it's not too bad. Um, just pop them in, screw them in, and put the pop the covers back on, and it just take. Now we probably had tried one or two here before, which really wasn't a good idea because it actually kind of tightened the the fabric on it there and just left a little. But you could put another one there to replace them. But look at. It's probably going to have a headline okay at some stage, but we just weren't ready to do it. The puppies over to the 6600 there, which we actually we put one into it because it was much worse, and um, it just we just decided we put a headline okay into that, and it probably, possibly does look the business there. So we'll slip across to this one, but for the moment, I have to say, I couldn't give out about these. These could come in in a, in a wide range of applications, not just for the roof, maybe a bit of scarf, bit of um, fabric on the side that has come loose. Rather than having it falling all over the place, you just screw these into it, pop them in, and it's neat and tidy there, and just gets you out, out of trouble for a while. Sitting here on my new air seat. Right job, Carl, this is here. Gotta be with the days. Um, yeah, look at I me, mean, we've done a complete refurb on this. Whole new pattern right inside in the cab. And by God, does it look good, I have to say. It's, uh, it's amazing what a bit of new pattern will do, and it's torn the tractor inside out as regards how smart and how tidy it looked. Big shout out also to John Connolly there, down to Phelan and the boys who sponsored these uh, trims for the tractor. So uh, yeah, definitely do look the business. There's not that many in it. We have a few around the back here and this big one here on the side. Then of course we that in, the headliner. So we decided here, we go, we, buy, we bought the headliner for it and we put that into it. Again, bit of a job to take it down. You have to just be careful here around with the radio and all this comes out. but. I have to say, once it's in there, it absolutely looks fab. Really right back to probably the, f the day it was, was new, whenever that was, it's many moons ago with this tractor, but um, yeah, just tidies it up to no end and it looks a business there. So really all we're waiting now is to get the cab in it. Mick has some small problem here, I think, with the foot throttle. Not just quite sure. Yeah, if anyone has any ideas, he reckons it's in there somewhere. He has no foot throttle working. He, we have a hand throttle of some sorts, which you can see, but the foot throttle is giving them a bit of, bit of grief there, so um, just don't know, it feels very loose and very, as if there's no nothing connected there to the linkage in it, so we just can't put the put the floor space back into it yet. Yeah, let's see, she may even start, will she? Yeah, so we have a hand throttle, but we've no, We've no foot throttle walking. Mick was uh, investigating here this morning, rang the bodies below in Kilberry. There is a simpler fix rather than tilting the cab, which I think was an option, but... You uh, assume you have to go way over as well to get at. Right. It's not just tilted, you have to go further than normal. So, so we said for plan B was to... Put a hole in the floor. Get a little inspection hole plate cut in the floor, which Mick has done. And I think he has found the problem. And there is the cause of the Mick. problem. In, which amazingly has stayed in there, but the linkage is disconnected, splitting fell over or whatever. Right, so that's all that's connecting the linkage. Yeah, it's yeah, it's just piece. getting it back in there, but we'll play with it. Oh, you've just no, it, Yeah, for holding it, because I don't want to drop it. If I drop it, I won't be able to find it. So here Mind is, your hands out, it's very oh sharp. Yeah, I see that there, Rick. Yeah, a little problem is in there, and that's your foot throttle, which is... Well, again, is, there, it, is it a bushing in them foot throttles there, no? It's, yeah, there, there's it, there is a bush in case you can get for them. Is you it, want yeah, to do that while we're there? Well, sure, look, it's probably going to be a better option then. We'll make there. it easier to put it back on, actually. Yeah, we'll be in there once, Mick. We don't want to be in there again, so we no, don't. No, no, no. So that's the only reason why we couldn't get the floor the inspection plate back on it, because mm -hmm. we had to get this sorted. So yes. hopefully when we get that going, we get a bit of a foot pedal. I don't know how the man was operating. I would have a foot pedal, but sure, obviously he no, was. Nowadays it's driving mad. 
But yeah. someone was trying to get do that before. Oh, were they? Because there was a hole drilling, which is it's a blank plate normally. So there was a hole drill, but I think they thought the roll pin was going to give up then. <laughs> right, you just have a bigger hole now. Oh, yeah, but sure, we tacked out of the well. Yeah, it's actually quite, quite heavy piece of steel, sharp. isn't it? Yeah, that's five mil thick nearly. Yeah, so you can see here where someone actually had cut the hole in yeah. it here. With the hole saw. Yeah, yeah, with the hole saw. So we need to, um, well, that's, we just tack it back in place. And oh, yeah, tack it in three or four corners and put sealer along the edges then. And hopefully we won't have to be in there again. No, well, at least we can get out now, handy. Right, so, so we also found a little bit of... A uh, little bit? There's a little nest in there, wasn't it? Yeah, massive. It was stuffed and lethal fire hazard because yeah. things got fairly hot in there now. They do, yeah. It wouldn't uh, tinder dry timber, yeah, branches, so, so everything. So we, ha we had a board's nest there. I don't know how they were getting in there. Probably access it back. From, from the back. Cahill has a picture of it there. Mick, well, Mick, the picture of it there, you'll see it on the video. But uh, yeah, it's right in there. See in there still. And we can still see some branches. twigs and branches mm -hmm. and bits of crap in there. Yeah, we'll so we'll have to take all that out then, and that should. Yeah. Probably was a grand little warm spot in fairness. Well, well sheltered, didn't you? Yeah. <coughs> All right. Okay. Once you see Mick over here at the bench, it's probably his favourite, favourite spot to be, isn't it? Especially well, in the workshop. Yeah, so he loves know. the nicky necky stuff. Electrics, mm. wire, and to do with that. Mick is your man. Okay, Mick, uh, this time we are on cameras. These are a Durate camera. Very good camera, I have to say, the Durate. Um, and wireless. Yeah. But this one wasn't. Well, it wouldn't work. <laughs> There was two things on the air, it was broken up, but we that patched in it, man. We looked at something with that. What's wrong with that there, Mick? Just is, is it loose or is No, it, it was pulled from the connection, the, the, the joiner. Yeah. But we'll play, we can sort it out. But that was the major problem there. Does it, does, this was on the hood, on the back of the spare. Yeah. And to get the hood off, you had to disconnect this. And if you look in there, it's, it's, mi it's minus a toot. <laughs> yeah, so you no connection, really? No. Yeah. Now, your opinion of wireless cameras, a, a, a lover or I not a lover? All right. They're handier to do. Handier to fit, yeah. But, I don't know, areas and that, the, kind of, the wired ones seem to be the better job. And any interference? Do they cause any interference on radio phones? I haven't, or a, I haven't heard, but I, there's not something ever asked about. Yeah, I know some of the earlier models we got there when they came out first there, you would uh, you turn on the radio or something, things, silly things would happen. But the old car radios used to be the same in the early yeah. days. Really I think that, that camera's a bit steamed. So there's Mick there, the they see there. See Mick there? Say hello there, Mick. Yeah, hello yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah so uh, again, biggest thing I see about these is a lot of corrosion comes around. I don't know, that's like a cast, is it? And a steam, that's how anodized Al 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 Alloy or something, is it? Yeah, but see, they steam up. Remember before with the Grimmy ones, yeah. we used to put them on the compressor in the, way, in the spring. Yeah, so just be careful if you are washing around that, just to avoid the camera there, because they don't want to get a bit of moisture in at the back of them and then Again, I'll just see nothing then, so that's really it. So we leave it on. What heads is here? I see a, a few mirrors here, Mick, as well. Now, yeah, these are off the 6600. Yeah, the usual with these, they snap on a roll pin in here and you can't repair them. They're really a throwaway job, aren't yeah, they? Yeah, and they seize here. Yeah. I'd say with sprayers and that, you're going so to get missed. Once you set these on, now we generally don't have put them out too, too, uh, you extend see them too far. Six, yeah. six. Because if you extend them too far, well, number one, they get a it's out of wax fairly, fairly quick if they're out that far. And then number two, they'll just seize in the one position. So just not a great job. Um, wouldn't be a lover of them. And as Mick says, then once they go here, that's really it. Yeah, it's swinging around yeah. the place, it's not helping. It's quite difficult to even take the bolts off them here at times. Yeah. So you can see the spring in there, God. I don't know if you can see it, but you can see the spring is... Actually, well, it's not. I thought it was cracked, new. but yeah, we can't do it. No, I think it's... I don't know if it's a roll. Does the roll pin... With a roll pin here that takes the right to take the there's some here as well. Okay. Yeah, which is an odd chance that's going to come out you're going to probably no. bust it anyway. So we've replaced it with two two new mirror arms and two new lenses and mirrors. So. Where are them chains hanging? Little bit of welding and on, Sean. I see you're practicing the welding. That's right, I go down. Try to get good as Dave or Marco or something like that. Oh, yeah, you're going to be the new Marco. Well, hopefully. Well, right. Right, I know. This is, uh, for anyone who does, doesn't know what this is, probably you don't know either, do you? No. no. So we have to educate him as well. This is a windrowing kit of the Trail Harvester. And the idea of the windrowing kit is that we can windrow to the left. So we're opening up the field um, and we need space for the tractor and trailer. We can put the cart elevator in reverse. And this is an extension piece that you, they can put on, the Grimmie have put on it. And we've put on it ours. The problem with it is that because it's on your off side, uh, sometimes... It's a catch stuff. Catch stuff. I, I know who bent it, do you? Because of the J. Yeah, it gives you a J, the JB, yeah. yeah he exactly. says it was me, but I haven't been driving it, so 
I'm going to blame John B on it, but very, very simple uh, to catch them, especially if you're up again in a ditch around like that, and even in the field, um, just come right on the head. Then. So what we've done here is, it wasn't it's sitting square, bad. and it was completely crooked. Yeah, it was in a banana, so it was, so <coughs> there's two bars holding it on. So you've cut the, you've, you have, yeah, well, look, you've cut, the, cut them in there, yeah, and then, welded it back together. Straighten the plates and then measure up. Another little swap of weld on there. So you're getting good on there, welded. Try down there. Yeah, we should look at practice week spare for it. Exactly, yeah. So, yeah, we get that back on it and we get the elevator uh, straightened up and back in it too. So Sean has fitted it on the windrow kit onto the end. This is the one that we, the boys had in at the workshop. Uh, we've welded it up, straightened it up, so it sits here. Now, we have a cart elevator which runs as the elevator on that, and Mark was taking that off. Again, uh, some of the canvas over time can get very hard, and the canvas can crack and rip, and as a result, can let potatoes fall down. You know, it, they can come out of the cart elevator because there's a hole in them. So what the lads have done is they've taken it off and we will have a bit of a video there. They're going to fix it there, but a complete new canvas on the back of it. Just, it was as simple to take it off when we are doing this. And once we'd half then we, we'd done the other few jobs. Again, it's always important when you'd have the, the cart elevator off just to, to throw all the rollers. But I presume Sean have done all that, have you? Yeah. yeah, he's done. Well, he's nodding anyway to say he has done it. Um, again, just, just checking everything else on it, drives and things like that, but it looks good. Um, from here anyway, it looks to be straight anyway. I know sometimes these can, they will take a little bit of, um, of abuse and there is flex on, on the, the, the elevator themselves, but that one looks good enough. So John B was actually, must be fairly careful when he was driving it. He'd tell us that anyway. Air fitting stay uh, seems to be always an air leak somewhere around the place, doesn't it? There's no doubt about it. Yeah. Air leaks everywhere. Now, what, what we have, um, some places we have, you know, one's joined to another and then they go off at another angle and, yeah, it's a lot of why, why, lot, why lot of ways it, yeah. which will loosen over time and yeah. cause a lot of air leaks. Now, they, reckon, they say that if you have a small air leak, it could cost up to 300 euro, 300 euro a year, mm. we say, for, for, because you're under yeah, the compressor yeah. to, to kind of save yeah. that air leak. So we need to tidy up a few of them, especially in the packers there, where we have a good few leaks. Come across this uh, several times and possibly have never went ahead with it, but I think it's time now that we look yeah, at it Yeah, like as, I said, we, we ran it in our workshop at home and, and yeah. never looked back after that. Right. The beauty of it is you want another air, you need another outlet somewhere, yep. you just bang one in. So we're going to use this piece of pipe and it doesn't have to be that long, but you can get it, obviously it comes in, in metre lengths, maybe more even, I think it comes in. Three metre lengths. Three metre lengths. Three metre lengths, yeah. So we've just got a metre over here. We want to put on at least uh, five ports onto it that we can plug in at any, any point we have. Now, to do that then, obviously, we have air intake. This is, I think that's a... 20 mil bore, yeah. 20 mil bore, which is probably some of the smallest of them, isn't it? I think well, it is the actual smallest one you can get, but there's a massive uh, air flowing through that. Yeah. I, I don't know the litres per minute, but it's compared to your airline, your pull-out airline or anything like that, it's, um, you're considering that that's only six mil. Yeah. So this, that lad there now is only six mil. Now you can get an eight mil port as well, but the 20 mil, it's a, it's a huge amount of air now. Like I said, I just can't remember off the top of my head the litres per minute, but it's massive. It, it'll, it'll do most applications. Yeah. Okay, so it's setting up there, maybe it'll explain. It comes with a range of different fittings now. I've got different fittings because obviously we've air in at one end, we need to blanket on the far side, yeah. and we need to tap into it then in, in a couple of different spots. Well, that's the beauty of it is. So if you ran that as a main manifold, now what we did was we ran a 40 mil, most of the way yeah. and then 20 mil you just keep stepping it down as, as you go around your workshop and one manifold around and then you can run off as many ports as you want so if you have somewhere where you have three machines you can put one two three and go on another 20 meters stick in another three yeah makes no difference it'll still carry it so what you have then is you have a blanking plate that you can screw off but once your pipe is cut clean you deburr the inside of it make sure there's no burr on it and then this lad here, he is clamp on. Very simple, I have this one actually off. So same thing, that's where we're gonna put her. Is you can slide it in. Now, I won't do it now because I wanna put a bit of yeah, lube brief, on it. Yeah. And then basically once that's in place, your clamp goes on and clamp in place. And you just tighten the Allen keys and that's it. So once we put the, the, the port and the blank off, we can put as many of these on as we want. So to, to put these on then, do you drill them first or do you, what's the simple Yeah, well, 
your mum was saying put a pilot hole down but I, I just can, ma yeah. ma mark the centre of the 20 mil it's yeah. just important to get it right because if you don't mark if you don't get them right there's a seal on the back of it here this is a blue that's your that's your actual seal for it you don't want the hole bigger than that or even the same size you want it a bit smaller so normally a 10 mil so that's a 10 mil bit there that'll fit down nice and comfortably inside that so once you drill your hole that size right in the centre of it that's it you just line them up on it and again same and probe it. just clamp them across with the, with the allen screws it, exactly that and he tightens down into it so but uh it's 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 an excellent system yeah. there's no doubt about it you, you won't look back yeah i know it's, it just makes life so much easier yeah. there, especially because you, you you'll always have another spot where you want to put you'll always forget airline, one. Yeah, you'll yeah always there's no doubt give it enough yeah. there, but another machine enough. or a machine comes in you need two of them or whatever instead of weighing them off and right. messing around just go direct into this and that's it right, puts okay. out an awful lot we'll let you we'll walk away with that so. Yeah. And so don't forget to like subscribe and yes get your answer in there for that quiz as well so uh from everyone here at finnegan's farm we'll talk to you all next wednesday